and welcome to this episode of The Guinness Guys. Now this week we're doing a revisit. I managed to get my hands on some Blue Moon Wheat Beer. Now, this is from the United States. It's made in Denver by the Blue Moon Brewing Company, which is owned by the Coors Company. So there's that. This is 5.4%. Uh, and the Guinness Draft is 4.2%. Now we're doing a revisit. Now there's three different names for this. The last one we did with the Wheat Beer we called the Eclipse. And we used a little brown wheat beer and it scored pretty low. So we thought it was only fair to use the one that was actually mentioned on the list, which was Blue Moon. Mm. And I finally got my hands on it, so we're going to pour this. The other, the other two names for this are, it's usually called the Black and Blue, but sometimes with Blue Moon as well, it can be called Dark Side of the Moon. So. Yeah. Pour about half. Okay, so we'll just set these aside for a minute and we'll pour it against. Anyway, as you can see, it's a cloudy wheat beer. Like the other, it looks pretty orangey. Mm. Anyway, let's get on to the pour here. One other thing about Blue Moon wheat beer is it says that you can drink it with an orange slice. No, but no. I don't think any real self respecting beer drinker would drink it with an orange slice. I've got good hopes for this because the Blue Moon is a stronger beer than the Guinness, but whether the gravities will affect each other, I don't know. But hopefully this works out pretty well. I'm already getting a lot of mixing, so probably not going to. That's about as good as it's going to get. So we're going to let these settle and all the rest, and we'll be back shortly on the Guinness guys. So here we have the two pints, and we look at the visual. Compare uh, the two in there. As you can see, there's still a tiny bit of layering here, so the yeah. black and tan spoon is the better spoon for these kind of pours. Yeah. But I think as well, it's also a question of skill on how good the pour can be. Yeah. But other than that, in the visual inspection, it's very kind of uh, heads kind of uneven, like uh, the last episode with the Belgian brunette. Mine has turned into a big pint of brown mud. I can't really see through it. There's little bits of yellow at the bottom, but yeah. really and truly everything is mixed right through. Yeah. Nothing can be seen through it really, so mm. pretty poor on the looks, I think, for mine. Yours looks better. But. Yeah. Anyway, let's do the smell test. Well, you can smell that wheat beer. Yeah. We're going to be uh, comparing this mostly to the Eclipse, which was the other uh, black and tan with wheat beer that we did. So uh, just expect that. But yeah. it does smell kind of milder than that. Yeah. I mean, the previous wheat beer, it, um, it does smell mild, but this uh, it's, it smells kind of stronger than it, I would say. Yeah, it's, it smells different in taste, though. The other wheat beer did smell mild, but it smelled more of licorice. This has less of a licorice smell. Mm. It was more of a citrus or orange smell. Yeah. And it really does smell weedy. Kind of like an orange peel smell. Yeah, orange peel and also a lot of bread. Yeah. Anyway, I think we'll just move on to the taste. To the dark side of the moon. To the dark side of the moon. Hmm. Hmm. It's very nice. It's a kind of a wheat and coffee bean mixture there. Yeah. Like coffee and toast for breakfast. It's a little like coffee cake. <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of that coffee cake taste, yeah. It's uh hmm. the previous one the, the flavors seem to interfere with each other. This seems to work a little better. Mm. I mean the flavors are pretty strong for both in this one, but they seem to be evenly matched. Hmm. I know you said the uh, the other wheat beer, black and tan, that the flavors were felt like they were competing against yeah. each other. This feels a little more in uh, in sync in terms of you know the wheat beer and the Guinness balancing, but it's still a, an odd taste mm. to have something. I mean, the back of the bottle here says that there's you know tastes of orange and and coriander and stuff, and it, does that really mix with the the heavy kind of earthy burnt carbon taste of the Guinness and it's uh mm. it's still not working that well for me to be honest. I think it's worked pretty well for me. It's held up more than the Eclipse. Yeah it's better than the Eclipse but to be honest that's not saying much. 
Yeah. Um, I'm not blown away by this. Uh, it has its moments, but uh, for taste, we're going to give that a three. Mm. Being a little generous because it's a little better than the Eclipse. Yeah. I think I'll give it a three as well for the taste. I mean, the tastes are very interesting, but you know, <clears throat> they gel good together, this combination, but some, you can't think they gel too good together. The paint does seem kind of bland a bit. Yeah, so I think that they've cancelled each other out, basically. Yeah. It's very mild paint. Yeah, it's pretty mild. It's mild, kind of unobtrusive. I mean, this this wheat beer is um, a little dull, to be honest, compared to a lot of European wheat beers, the ones with the crazy licorice or the or the really sweet ones, you know. Yeah. This one seems a little a little middle of the road. Mm. So it has led to a sort of middle of the road. Well, I suppose we're already we're. I suppose we're already reviewing the combo here. But yeah, it seems kind of middle of the road, this cocktail. It seems, instead of the two tastes fighting with each other, they've cancelled each other out to leave something that's... Mm. I mean, it's still kind of interesting, but it's not that interesting. Would we order this again? I don't know. I mean, the Blue Moon Wheat Beer is just kind of, I mean, they, 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 Blue Moon Wheat Beer, they try to, they try to market it like it's this, this special little craft beer, but it's owned by the Coors Company, and they sell it everywhere, so in order to sell it everywhere, you kind of have to, to dull down the taste of it, really, to be honest, and this is, mm. as you said earlier, put an orange slice in it, and anything, no, no, man. They say, you know, subtle twists and old world handcraft brewing. I doubt it. I, I severely doubt it. Mm. But this has led to a very, a rather dull pint. The com as, as a combo, not great, to be honest. Yeah. I think for the combination, I'll just give it a 2 out of 5. I would say that's being harsh, but no, this this isn't very good. I mean, they're, they're distinctive flavours, and... The Blue Moon's okay on its own if you're into that sort of thing. I mean, it's it's better than most mass market lagers and stuff, but mm. still not great in terms of wheat beer. So for the combo, yeah, two's fair. I mean, it's it's okay. It might pique your interest a little, but you wouldn't order two of these. No. Yeah. Okay. So how about the compared? I think for compared, it's done pretty well because the last one wasn't very good but this isn't that much better you know mm. it's maybe slightly better than the eclipse but i think the general consensus is that wheat beers and guinness don't mix very well no i think that the flavors just compete too much or they cancel each other out mm. i mean as we go down in this most of the wheat beer taste has been lost but most of the guinness taste is lost as well you don't have that roasty carbon thing mm. and you don't really have this this lovely lightness actually when you, that you have with this as a wheat beer yeah it's actually quite nice and light it's a good spring and summer drink but yeah the two have just cancelled each other out here so even com like it compares favorably favorably to the eclipse but it doesn't really compare favorably to anything else so i'm going to have to give it a very middle of the road three well i think in my opinion for the compared i'm just going to give it a two out of five I think that boat's very considerable compared to the Eclipse and any other Black and Town combination. Yeah, this is this is not one I would try. I mean, the last couple of ones have been surprising and interesting, and mm. some of them have you know been a little bit of a letdown. But this is just this is bland. Mm. This is bland. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to add up the scores here. So this week I've scored a seven out of fifteen. And I've scored it 8 out of 15. Now, when we compare it directly to the Eclipse, I scored it 7 out of 15. So it's gained one point, to be honest. And it's now in the middle third of score, which means it's pretty average. Mm. I mean, compared to the other ones, there's some crazy taste and some interesting taste, but this is just, this is kind of dull. Yeah. Com compared to my uh, Eclipse, I scored the last one 10 out of 15. I've scored the 7, so I've lost three points, but I think... During the time, I, I had a big thing for wheat beer, and I didn't hadn't really tried it that many. But you know, I was I was kind of pushing it because it was my favorite kind of beer. But when mixed with Guinness, you know, 
And this is kind of the same as well. When you mix it with Guinness, it, you know, the general consensus is some black and tan cocktails work, some don't. This is obviously one that doesn't. Yeah, I would put this down with the D4 Special and the Eclipse itself. Mm. These don't work. Yeah. Some of them have been disappointing, but this one, I kind of expected this, to be honest, that it's not going to be that good. But mm. Anyway, hopefully we can uh, pick up some other better cocktails, but until then... We'll see you again on the Guinness, guys. Anyway, hopefully we'll be able to have a... <coughs> Damn it. We will... So that, that, until that, that sucked. <laughs> until until then, that's all from us. Yeah. Yeah. Until then, and then I'll see, yeah. we'll see you on the Guinness Guide. Until, until then. Yeah, and then I'll see you, see you next time. Meh. This is fucking weird. That is weird. <laughs>